I've been thinking a lot lately about families. This is no doubt because I have just returned from the 70th odd reunion of my mother's family. And like many families, it is big and boisterous, and it contains its fair share of characters. But then again, the Bible is full of big, boisterous families that are often dysfunctional. Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Wednesday, June 22nd, 2022. Whenever I hear people talk about Bible-centered family values, I have to admit that I chuckle just a little bit. While there are a lot of families in the Bible, I can think of very few whose behavior we would regard as model. Consider the very first family in the Bible, Adam, Eve, Cain, Abel. Talk about a dysfunctional family. You know the story, but it always bears repeating because there's always a detail we haven't noticed before. Now the man knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have produced a man with the help of the Lord. Next she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep and Cain a tiller of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. And Abel, for his part, brought of the firstlings of his flock, their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is lurking at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must master it. Cain said to his brother Abel, Let us go out to the field. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? You know the rest of the story. God casts Cain out and makes him a fugitive and a wanderer. And Cain fears that people will kill him when they meet him. But God places a mark on him that provides him protection. The story ends, Then Cain went away from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. It's all there. Sibling rivalry, vying for the attention of the father, in this case, the Lord. There's anger and there's revenge. Almost every family I know has many of these elements at work. Okay, so most of the time one sibling does not literally murder another sibling, but the same dynamics are at work nevertheless. Anger, jealousy, lashing out, and the result is often families that become so broken that sibling cannot even stand to be in each other's presence. In one of his greatest novels, John Steinbeck writes an extended story of a family in which the same dynamics play out over the course of two generations. The title of the novel, East of Eden, is taken directly from the story of Cain and Abel from the very end where it says Cain ends up in the land of Nod, east of Eden. The book is primarily the story of two brothers, Cal and Aaron, who vie for their father's love and attention. Aaron finds pleasing his father to be easy and natural. Cal, on the other hand, has a dark side and struggles to know how to please their father. After their father loses a small fortune on a speculative business venture, Cal borrows money from his mother, a woman who had left their father when they were infants and whom he discovers lives in the same town, now running a brothel. He invests the money in agriculture and makes a fortune speculating that the price of beans will skyrocket if the United States enters World War I. As it turns out, he's right. The United States does enter the war and Cal clears a very handsome profit, 
enough not only to repay his loan, but enough to give his father a sum of money sufficient to cover his losses from his failed business venture. But the father rejects this offering. He won't accept the money, believing it was wrong for Cal to profit from the war. In his anger, Cal takes his brother Aaron, a more sensitive young man, to meet their mother. When Aaron finds out who she is and what she does, he leaves home, joins the army, and dies in battle. It may not be exactly the same story as Cain and Abel, for Cal doesn't actually kill his brother, but he does bear some responsibility for his death nevertheless, and he knows it. But here's the thing. There's still grace. God acted in grace to protect Cain by placing a mark on him to protect him from people who might want to kill him. And Cal's father, before he dies, offers a kind of absolution which frees him from the burden of guilt and shame. Look hard enough and you'll see this drama lived out in families all around you and maybe even in your own family. We compete for affection. We turn jealous when one person seems to re receive the greater portion of that affection, and we lash out in anger. As bad as it can get, the lesson here is that there is room for grace. Always room for grace. Tomorrow, another family, another rash act of retribution born of jealousy, and another story that ends with grace and redemption. But for now, may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.